So Eagles are one of four teams showing the most interest in Shady McCoy. I, I love it. I love it. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. We got a lot to talk about. 53-man roster set. Let's get to it. Here and I'm telling you this if you're upset, if you're upset, one of your Eagles, the players that you like, got cut today, it could be worse. It could be worse. You could be a Houston Texan fan. What are the Houston Texans doing? It's insane. It's crazy. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. Um, but before I do that, I, I want to talk about what happened today for the Eagles to get to their 53 man roster. And I'll give you my opinion on it and where I think it goes from here. But uh, before I do that, I, I want to go over what they did today in order to get to that 53 man roster. So the first thing we know is that they put Jalen Mills on the physically unable to perform list that's not a surprise at all um, I expected that to happen then they went ahead and they released Stefan Wisniewski making him a free agent now there's some talk that he could come back after week two now the reason they do that I believe is because I believe then they don't have to guarantee any money or something to that effect I I'm not positive okay so Wisniewski he gets caught then the Eagles go ahead and they wait first guy Josh Adams well I thought that that was going to happen. He led the team in rushing last year. Too stacked at the running back position. He had to have an unbelievable training camp in preseason. He just didn't. Okay, he just didn't. Um, tight end Alex Ellis. Um, that's not a surprise to me. What's a surprise to me is that they only have two tight ends right now. We're going to get into that later um, because I think that's going to play a big part into what's next. Uh, Trayvon Hester gets cut. The double doink block in the field goal versus the Bears. This guy's going to find a home. He's a good player. He was just in a very, very crowded defensive tackle uh, you know, depth chart. It's just too many good players. Uh, offensive guard Sua Opeta. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. I don't know. Tight end Joshua Perkins. That surprised me. That surprises me. Uh, running back Boston Scott. This is one that I didn't want to lose. I'm hoping he clears waivers. I hope he clears waivers and ends up back on our practice squad. Um, Wendell Smallwood. <laughs> Wendell Smallwood got cut. I'm sorry. I'm not dancing. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. No. No, no, no. Wendell Smallwood. Uh, he's been there a long time. I thought he was going to get cut a few years ago. But he got cut. I'm not dancing. I'm not dancing. I don't dance. Only do white river. And, and good things. Quarterback Clayton Thorson. He stinks. No, he he he's gonna clear waivers and he'll be back on the practice squad. Who's gonna pick him up? Um, a lot of people didn't think Brett Toth, the tackle that they brought from the army, would get cut. I expect him to clear waivers and then be back on the practice squad. That's why they did it. And then wide receiver Greg Ward went today, and it's another guy I I thought you know had a chance to make it, or at least I thought should have. Um, they retain. Um, Mac Hollins, who I know that they're keeping him because they're high on him and because he's such a great special teamer. And, and that's the thing with a lot of these players on the Eagles team, man. They got a lot of good special teams players. Uh, Rudy Ford, the, the safety that, that they brought in just what, a week ago, um, he, he's a great special teams player. That's why they kept him. That's why he's still on the team right now. LJ Fort, a really good special teamer. We know how Grugier Hill was as a special team. The Eagles are loaded with special team guys. I mean, they got guys that can play special teams, and I expect them to have one of the best special teams unit in the National Football League this year. Even Corey Clement, really good special teamer. So, here's... The, Here's my take on the roster and all the cuts from yesterday and today. Um, the one that I'm most disappointed about, the one that disappoints me most is the Mark Hamishel. Um, I wanted Mark Hamishel to make this team. Even if it was in a sixth wide receiver position, I don't know if he's going to clear waivers. I'm worried about it. I'm hoping he does and can come back. 
But uh, I thought he was too good during spring and even in preseason. Uh, I wish they would have kept him. But they were high on Matt Collins, and, 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 and that's just the way it was. Now, the roster move I was most excited about was definitely the Eagles keeping TJ Edwards. I am very excited that TJ Edwards made this team. I really am. The only problem is, is we, we've got a problem with the tight end situation. You see, the Eagles only have two tight ends on their roster, which means they're going to look to add another tight end. They're probably looking for a, a blocking tight end. They're going to watch and see who clears waivers, who gets cut, who was released. I haven't seen a list of the tight ends that have been cut or released, so I don't know who they are yet, but I'm sure that's where they're looking. I'm sure they're looking at adding a third tight end, and when they do that, they're going to have to cut somebody. Is it going to be Nate Herbig, who I think deserved to make this team? Is it going to be uh, Rudy Ford? who they really love him for special teams, and I think that they're going to look to keep him. I think they're going to look to keep Herbeck because they want a backup center, which means that I think it's going to come down to maybe TJ Edwards and maybe LJ Fort. Now, the reason I'm bringing up LJ Fort is because if you let him go, okay, uh, you would then receive a compensatory pick. They lost a compensatory pick when the 49ers cut uh, Jordan Matthews today. Um and maybe, this is just me speculating, maybe LJ Fort, they say, hey, look, you know what? He's a pretty good player, pretty good special teams, but we like this young rookie in TJ Edwards, and uh, we could get our compensatory pick back. Let's move on from him. Uh, so I don't want LJ Fort to go. I don't want TJ Edwards. I want to keep my linebackers as is. Keep them as is. That's how I feel. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going to see. I, I think if I'm TJ Edwards, I'm not feeling comfortable right now. If I'm... Uh, if I'm Rudy Ford, Nate Herbig, I'm not comfortable because I don't know where the Eagles are going to go uh, when they add a third tight end. But they're definitely going to add a third tight end. They're not going to run all those 12-man personnel and not have a third tight end. And, and they're going to look for a blocking tight end. Uh, Richard Rodgers is on the IR. He's out for the year, okay? So he's not able to come back this year. So, um... <sighs> TJ Edwards, I'm going to have to sweat it out with you, buddy, because I don't want you to go. I definitely don't want you to go at all. Um, please, you know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, so that's kind of my thoughts on the roster right now. Uh, you know, Sharif Miller making it. I'm glad. I didn't want them to cut him. I was thinking maybe you give him itchy ass and he goes on IR and you stash him. But they're going to keep six defensive ends. I'm perfectly good with that. And uh, hopefully we'll get some of these guys Back. I want I want Toth back. I want uh, Boston Scott back. I want Mark and Michelle Agadosi. I want to get some of these guys on the practice squad, uh, and and it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, we have to talk about some other things going on because as I'm doing this video, uh, I had to pause it because I was getting an update, and I read the update, and it said that there are four teams right now showing early and pretty strong interest. In Shady McCoy. The four teams are the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Patriots, and the Eagles, baby. And the Eagles. The Eagles have reached out to Shady McCoy. And apparently, um, they, they got some interest. Now, how, how far are they willing to go? I don't know. But you got to think, man. You got to think that they got some sort of advantage over these other teams. Just in terms of location and being an Eagle and that kind of thing. Now, he may get more of an opportunity with, let's say... The Patriots, well, maybe not even the Patriots, maybe with the, the Chiefs, right? Uh, or the Chargers. Um, Chargers have given Melvin Gordon permission to seek a trade, but they still got some good running backs. So I don't think anywhere Shady's going to go, he's going to be the starter, the franchise guy. He's going to be backup. So he may say the Eagles may hold an advantage. I mean, the, the report is that the Eagles have showed interest that they have reached out. Four teams have reached out. Eagles are one of them. So we got to keep our eye on it. I'm not saying anything's going to happen. All I'm saying is that if the Eagles really want him, they have to have a slight advantage being that he's an ex-Eagle. Um, I'm sure he would love to come home. So exciting. I'm excited about that. We're going to see how that, you know, how it all unfolds. Cannot wait. I cannot wait. Get it, bring Shady home, baby. Bring him home. Now, some people don't like my take on getting rid of Sproles. And, and here's my thing with, with the whole Sproles thing, okay? I love Darren Sproles. I, I love him. Sweating in his hot. But I love Darren Sproles, okay? But over the last two years, what, is he, what has he showed you? What has he showed you? 
He's been hurt. He hasn't looked good. I don't think he's had a, a return, punt return, kickoff return for a touchdown since what, 2016, something like that. So who's got more left, Darren Sproles or Shady McCoy? That, that's all I was saying. I, you know, I was thinking something to the effect of, hey, you get rid of Sproles, you put Shady in his place, you bring back Boston Scott, there's your returner. Now, I'm not saying you even have to do that. The Eagles may be like, the hell with it. We, we were going to keep five running backs. We were going to keep Wendell Smallwood. No, we're just going to bring Shady in and have five backs. They could do that too. That's fine. I don't care how they do it. And look, if Sproles has something left, I'm going to be the happiest guy in the world because I love what Darren Sproles, I love Darren Sproles as a person, what he is. I'm just concerned about all the injuries and, and all the hurt. I have watched Shady this preseason, and I thought he looked pretty good. I thought he looked like he had a few steps left. So, <sighs> Eagles are interested in Shady. We're going to see how, how, how strong that interest is. If I'm Shady, I'm probably going to say, where am I going to get the most playing time? Um... You know, and, and that may be the Chargers and the Chiefs right now. Where, you know, where am I most comfortable? Where is my family at? All those kind of things. Philly. And and that and that may give us an advantage. So keep your eye out. We'll see what happens, okay? Um, last thing I got to talk about is this Tunsil trade, right? The Houston Texans go out and they trade for Larry Tunsil and Kenny Stills. They give up two first-round picks and a second-round pick. Okay, plus they got some players in the fourth round pick back or something like that. But here's the thing. I don't know what they're doing. What are they doing? Because you, you got Tunsil and you didn't even try to give him a long-term contract. So I think he's a free agent at the end of the year. You could lose him and you gave up two first round picks on a second. Are you crazy? You crazy if I'm Howie Roseman because the Texans have no general manager. They just have dingbats. They have no general manager right now. Call them up and rob that team blind. They're dumb. That's what I say. Get, take all their assets. They're just throwing things away. Two second round picks. Two first round picks and a second round pick. And you get a tackle back. And you don't even work out a long term deal with him. So you could lose him after you. How could you do that? I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. And I understand Miami doing it. Miami probably wants to burn the whole thing down and rebuild. I get it. Anyways. When I have a bad day from now on, I'm always going to think, at least, I, at least I'm not a Houston Texans fan. You know what I mean? With that said, take care. Talk to you later. And don't be a dingbat.